starting to stream. Got it. We are live. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and potential Toastmasters, those who we hope will be joining Toastmasters in the not too distant future. My name is Ken Richardson. I am your club growth director for District 115. And with me today is my co-host, distinguished Toastmaster and past district director, Phyllis Tribby. Good morning, Tribby. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I thought I'd trip you up there a little bit, but it is rolled right along. <laughs> Phyllis, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you for joining us. Our guest today is Bill Baruniga, a distinguished Toastmaster, and he is a member of a couple of clubs, but one that he's particularly interested in talking about today is Bubbling with Joy. So welcome, Bill. How are you doing? Very good, Ken. Thank you. Hello, Phyllis. Thanks for having me this morning. We're so glad that you were able to join us. I'd like to start by asking you a little bit about your Toastmasters journey. How did you get into Toastmasters and why? <laughs> for me, Toastmasters started with a business club. It was formed at an employer of mine, saw it as a great training opportunity within the organization and we chartered a club. Chartering a club is a great experience. So I'm a charter member of Boulder Voices, which is currently the one club in Boulder City, Nevada. And that, we started that club in 2013. So you were a member of that and club. That club, as an example, that club met weekly. So we were very motivated, lots of speech projects, made great progress. And within a couple of years, I was the club president and we became presidents distinguished that year. For me personally, went on to be an area director and then a division director and have enjoyed a couple of speech contest competitions as a contestant. Pretty much over the years, no big rush, but uh, over the years, after a while, you, you'd start to have all these experiences, being a club coach and starting another club, mentoring another club. So many opportunities, and they just happen over time. And so many great people. It's been very helpful for me personally. And what a great community we have in Southern Nevada among all of our clubs. Well, it sounds like you've had a very interesting journey and you've served uh, as club officer. You've gotten a new club started, you've been a club coach, an area director, division director. So that's really terrific. What is it that motivates you to stay in Toastmasters? Community service and serving and volunteering, probably number one, along with the personal development all of these things add to your character, your experiences, your capabilities, just functioning better as a person. These are all opportunities that sometimes we don't get otherwise, or even if we do get otherwise, it's right there in front of us. Toastmasters is a great organization. It's so easy to participate and benefit. Well, you mentioned that uh, you were in uh, Boulder Voices. Are you still in that club? When do they meet and where? They meet in Boulder City, and they're most affiliated with a large employer in Boulder City, the Bureau of Reclamation. Great meeting rooms and offices, very nice for Toastmasters meetings. And with the, with the ups and downs of the past year, uh, they're meeting online weekly. And what day and time do they meet? Uh, Wednesdays, lunchtime. Wednesdays at lunch. Very good. Now, and I know it's not a closed you, club, by the way. It's not a closed club. It's not a closed club. So they're, they're not meeting in person yet. They're still meeting online <clears throat> every Wednesday at noon. Correct. Excellent. Okay. So if folks are interested, they can email me and I will get in touch with Boulder Voices and get a link. So my email is d115cgd for club growth director at gmail.com. Now, I know that you are also in another club, and I'm going to turn the uh, program over to Phyllis here to let her continue uh, sort of picking your brain and learning about your Toastmasters experience. Phyllis? Picking the brain. <laughs> Isn't that a wonderful phrase? Uh, for six o'clock in the morning. I think yeah. it's great. 
So bubbling up with joy. That is your other club? Is this a club you've started? And how long has it been in existence? Great. Thanks, Phyllis. My wife, Erin, and I, and some other people very motivated to appreciate wine, but also Toastmasters, uh -huh. beginning of last year, decided to put those together. And we noticed we didn't see a, a Toastmasters club specifically focused on wine appreciation. There needed to be one. We developed a meeting room relationship with Total Wine at Town Square. Fantastic oh, setting. Gosh. That has gone by the wayside for the past <clears throat> year and a half. So we're rebuilding that situation. In the meantime, we are meeting at a business's conference room nearby Town Square. So still very accessible, be very easy to get to from people all over the valley. And we're currently meeting monthly, once a month as the club grows. We would like to meet more often, but for now, that's our schedule. And we try to gear towards wine related holidays. For example, the last weekend of this month, there's a red, a national red wine day. Of course we have to have a meeting. Now, what is the premise of the club? It's wine appreciation, all things wine, not necessarily tasting. And I can explain what that is all about. We're currently, our meeting themes are all relate to wine and all speech projects somehow have to relate to wine. Oh. Well, that, that, that's an easy topic because there are so many factors and facets of anything related to wine. And I'll give a couple of examples. Our current meeting themes and dates and times are on Meetup. If you go to Meetup, and simply do a search on Toastmasters Bubbling with Joy, that's the club name, or just Toastmasters Bubbling, the yep. club schedule will come up. And check it out. And we've already got meetings planned as a part of our current theme. We are on a world tour of wine. Mm -hmm. And our current structure is we will visit through our speech projects and some wine tasting different wine regions. We started with Australia, then we went to Northern California, and at the end of this month, we're starting Argentina. And we will sample a couple of red wines for one meeting. The next meeting will be a couple of white wines. Then sparkling wines, maybe more commonly thought of as champagne, anything bubbly. And the fourth meeting of every place we visit will be specialty wines or varieties, say dessert wines, port, or maybe uh, an aperitif. There's so many choices that can be of our specialty varieties. And so that's a four meeting general premise for each place we visit. Well, there's so many wine regions around the world. That's a couple of years worth of club meeting themes right there. Now this is referring to wine tasting, but that is not required. And we're not wine experts by any means. One way to look at it is how many of us go to a restaurant that might have a nice wine menu and we don't really know what we're looking at or what to ask. Well, that's something that we talk about in the club. So we're just helping people be functional and learn a little bit. We have people who do not drink wine at all, but they host business meetings and they want to be conversant and familiar enough to at least have a conversation for the dinner planning or the wine list. So here's an example, speech projects. Hopefully this is visible. It is, yes, I can see it. All right. Corks, are those corks? Cork. Well, here's one kind of cork. But here's another kind, and they are, they're different materials. They have a different, they have a history. So there's materials, there's use, there's history. Why do we even use them? Where does the name cork even come from? Is there something symbolic about what corks do? Well, by the time you add up all those questions, somebody could do an entire pathways level 
on all the things of quarks. All your speeches could just be related to quarks. How many of us have been in a meeting or we know people where they, they seem to be kind of at a loss for speech topics? Come to our club. There is, here's, here's another one. Okay. Is this a wine glass? Well, here's, here's one. And uh, well, this is a wine glass too. Same thing, what's, what's the history, origin, meaning, symbolism of all these? I think that's another pathways level, just um, wine glasses. So as you can see, it just never ends. Um, now it's a little too early for this, but <laughs> there's, there's a particular fictional movie character that's appeared in tons of movies. And he, he always seems to know exactly what sort of Dom Perignon champagne he wants. And of course, you know who I'm referring to, the classic James Bond. And he likes his bubbly, the nickname for champagne, and it's associated with celebration and having fun and joy. And that's the origin of the name of this club. So we are Toastmasters bubbling with joy, open to anybody that in any way wants to learn a little bit, wants to appreciate wine, how to do a toast. That's one of our Toastmasters speech projects. I think this is the club really for anybody. Excellent, excellent. And you mentioned the Red Wine Day. Kind of gave me the idea that maybe your date for your meetings may vary through the month. Would that be true? Very perceptive, Phyllis. It could vary, or maybe we'll be an additional meeting. That would also be the goal. I and see. we're currently gravitating towards Saturdays at 6.30. That's the current consensus of interest among our at attendees. But we're open and flexible to more meetings in addition to that. And not only wine, which may or may not be involved, uh, food. Wine is closely associated with food. And in Toastmasters, we love food that can be a part of our meetings as well. Maybe a separate meeting, we might go to a restaurant or somebody might host at home, some food with a wine list. So the opportunities are endless. And yes, in conjunction with all of the many wine related holidays during the year. Well, you know, I was thinking about that as you were discussing the various topics and, and the food and I thought, this is great. I never know what wine to pair with what food and I'm sure that I always get it wrong. So that would be, uh, you know, just a fantastic uh, lesson to learn. So, so you don't look too silly when you're, I, I do know you're supposed to put white wine with fish, but I always prefer red wine. So this is a great That's example right. of how you can explore your hobbies or interests and create a specialty Toastmasters club. What, what, a, what a great combination of factors. You get friends, you get wine. What else could one ask for? Exactly. And the topics really are endless. History, culture, science. It goes on and on. Anything loosely related to wine. Well, I can see where you would go into a winery. This is by Zoom or by uh, the internet. Find out all there can be known about that uh, particular winery. And I can see why it might take you four weeks to get all the information uh, to your members about what you found at that particular winery. And therefore, when I go to visit that country, I might check out that winery because of your research. Have any of your members ever gone to one of your wineries that you've researched? We look forward to that. And yes, actually, that does come up. People will, will bring a wine or talk about a wine from where they have been, mm -hmm. which is a great source of more stories and more speech projects. I've got a couple of, you, you notice me looking off. I've got another computer running here and I'm checking Facebook. 
And there are a couple of really interesting comments that I want to share with you. First of all, a question. How many bubbles are in a glass of champagne? <laughs> Is that a question you can you can answer for us, Phil? You know, the last time I counted, I got up to 800,432. Okay, good answer. Now, the other thing here, this is really an interesting Which, idea. May, by the way, Ken, that may or may not be somebody's club number. We'll say. No, <laughs> that's I need to <laughs> oh, that was a club number. I like that. Very creative for so early in the morning. Uh, another, here's a great idea. This comes from uh, our, our esteemed public relations manager. And she said, what about a joint meeting with Toastmasters in the kitchen? That's one of our newest clubs. They meet exclusively online and they spend their meetings talking about food and they have demonstrations on how to prepare food. And it would just, it sounds like it would be a terrific match to have Bubbling with Joy and Toastmasters in the Kitchen have a joint meeting where you can talk about, here's what we're fixing today. And then Bubbling with Joy can talk about, well, this is the right wine to go with this food. What do you think about that? I think that meeting will be all weekend. <laughs> That's a fantastic idea. Of course, absolutely. Excellent. That would be good. Well, I'm going to uh, make sure that we put you in touch with Larry Johnson and uh, talk about that as a potential. Oh, that's great. Larry's a great guy. He is. I think uh, one of the things that makes Toastmasters work so well is uh, having some flexibility about how we do things, but more importantly, making sure that we provide fun in our meetings and there, there's enough variety that uh, you find something for everyone. So I think that's a good example of how that can work. What a unique way to go about that. Absolutely. And any, anybody's desire, they wanna learn, of course, advancing your Toastmaster skills, that sort of learning, but then anything related to wine, learning at all, just an interest, wine tasting, yes, but so many, so many wonderful topics surrounding them. And yes, food is a part of it. <laughs> in, in fact, and, and that, that is a part of our plan. Every so often we will uh, have a meeting that involves pairing food with wine. So absolutely Toastmasters in the kitchen. Phyllis from a non-wine drinker. Is there a wine that I can stock for people that like wine with their meal that goes with everything? Or would be okay with most things? I think that is clearly a speech topic. <laughs> and that, that, that topic can be explored definitely. And we've talked about that sort of thing in club meetings. As Ken mentioned, well, you know, there's, we, we regard reds pretty well. Some people prefer their whites. You probably want one of each, probably a lighter red, kind of an all purpose, like a Pinot Noir. That would be, that would be nice if you had something like that around. Any red wine person should be happy with that. There's some great white wine choices. And, a lot of people like their Chardonnay. And then we get into the range of prices of how much you want to spend. That's another big topic. Doesn't necessarily have to be a lot. And then how to store wine. Generally keep things cool. We're in the hot desert, but if there's a way to keep wine somewhat cool, that helps also. We talk about that. So we could definitely help you out with, without too much of just like you say, that is excellent. Just socially, this is a part of social grace. Just simply having a couple of suitable bottles of wine handy for those moments. That is excellent, Phyllis. That's a and great I idea. was at uh, Steve Goldstein's when he'd had his kitchen redone. He had a wine cooler put in this 
kit new kitchen. And I was impressed that someone felt that strongly about their wine. So would all of your members kind of feel strongly about their wine? Not necessarily. Uh, okay. they, they might. We have people that just simply want to learn. If they get to that point of realizing, ooh, you know, I want to pay attention to wine storage. Some of us, yours truly, actually dedicated a room of their house to wine oh storage. Oh, my. <laughs> and, wow. Well done, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> this is the man to talk to. He knows his stuff. Okay. It, it has its own cooler. It's its own little air conditioning unit. And a friend and I went to Napa Valley to get some used red wine barrels that we cut up and turned into storage racks. So that's a, that's a part of our wine room here also. <laughs> And what a fun thing to talk about. Obviously not everybody needs to do that, but it's some people get down the road that far. And Should it be in a basement area? <laughs> a basement in Vegas? What are you talking about, <laughs> Phyllis? <laughs> back East, yeah, I have friends back East uh, uh, where I'm from, from in Kentucky who converted their basements, where they actually had basements, into wine cellars. So it is a growing hobby, if you like, uh, pretty much around the United States. So the sales of wine, and I've read articles that's been going through the roof. And like uh, Bill said, it's a great hobby to be a collector, to be a connoisseur. And we actually have a Toastmaster. We're going to have to have her on, Irene Gade, who is, uh, I'm not going to say it right, sommelier. So how do I say that, Bill? That's good. Okay. From the yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's like at, up at the uh, master level, I think. Uh, so I'm going to have to make sure she knows about bubbling with joy. Oh, she does. Oh, she mm -hmm. does. Okay. So you know Irene and you guys have connected. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, she's great. We look forward to having her visit. Uh, she's so busy with her other clubs, including a wine tasting club. She's so active already, but someday she'll make it to our club as well. And that's okay. That's fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to have her on uh, Wake Up with Toastmasters. Phyllis, yeah, do you have, absolutely. oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm going to have to have her on here because uh, uh, it's always great to learn about our clubs in our district. You know, we have about 62 clubs now. And I'm always amazed at the variety. And you can find pretty much anything that you're looking for in Toastmasters. And especially when we talk about specialty clubs that are organized around a particular theme or a particular project or a particular hobby, I, I think those are uh, very successful because there's an interest that goes beyond learning how to be a communicator and a leader. There's an interest in the subject matter so you have sort of like a triple play. <laughs> Not to mention, of course, uh, the fellowship. Well, I can see we, our clock, we're getting a little bit uh, where we're gonna have to wrap up. Before we do that though, and I give you some announcements for today. Phyllis, do you have any last minute questions you want to put to Bill? Put, put to Bill, that, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just, Kind of wondering more about the dates. You mentioned that, that we should really go on to meet up. Is that where we can find all the dates where you'll be meeting and where and when? Yes, meet up and many clubs are on meet up, which is fantastic. Many of our clubs, we have our own district 115 meet up. And in fact, let's uh, let just take a look here. We've got our meetings through November listed on Meetup. Wonderful. With well, the meeting anybody theme. comes to visit, right? Yes. Just want to learn. We are available for really smart, advanced people like Irene King, and we are also available for people who 
just want to learn anything and they know they they just want to have what do i do i just want to have a couple of bottles of wine ready for yes. when people come over what do i even do <laughs> phyllis I, I think we look forward to having you thank you so much i look forward to visiting with you i'm going to have to stop by as well uh, i'm not at, at your level i do like red wine so uh, any last uh, minute things that you would like to share with us? Toastmasters bubbling. Just do a search using that at Meetup. Get in touch. Check it out. Send an email. Contact us. Find us at our free Toast Toast website as well. Glad to have you. And since people, since clubs have been able to start meeting again in person, it's been great for visitors and interest that we that we've had. And so we look forward to meeting not just once a month, but twice a month to have enough opportunities to keep people moving down the road of their pathways projects. Well, Bill, I want to thank you so much for joining us today on Wake Up with Toastmasters. It's been a real pleasure. I've learned a lot. I didn't really know much about Bubbling with Joy. I didn't realize they were a wine club. But thank you so much for sharing that. I've got some great ideas going forward. And we'll have to have you back someday, or better yet, we'll have to do a remote where we are in person at Bubbling with Joy, okay. sampling the wine. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious to how, how the program would go after about three glasses of, uh, <laughs> of a good Cabernet. <laughs> to save the wine tasting to the end. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, well, I want to tell our thank audience, uh, thank you for joining us today, or if uh, this is going to be posted on the uh, Club Growth Director web page, uh, Facebook page, uh, so you can watch it anytime, just go to Facebook and search Club Growth Director, Toastmasters Club Growth Director, it's actually uh, TM, D115CGD, so you can watch this program later. Upcoming events, I want to focus on today, reminding you that on Saturday at 6 yes. p.m., we have our educational uh, programs. So if you want to sign up for that, shoot me an email. I'll give you uh, a copy of the link and tell you what programs are there. I can't remember them all off head, but off the top of my head. <clears throat> but I know that we're going to be doing a new member orientation, as we always do. Introduction to Pathways for new people joining Toastmasters. We're going to have a program on uh, Facebook and websites for our clubs. And then uh, Gene Williams, our program quality director, is doing a program about Zoom, sort of an intermediate level Zoom. So if you have an opportunity, please join us. Again, send me an email, d115cgd at gmail.com, and I will send you the link and the list. The program runs, we have two uh, sessions basically, basically from 6 to 7 p.m. and then 7 to 8 p.m. So we'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget that uh, Wake Up with Toastmasters is on five days a week. Phyllis and I host on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Mondays and Fridays, we have our program quality director, Jean Williams, and on Wednesdays, our public relations manager, Jennifer Smith. So thank you for joining us. Have a great day, everybody. And we will see you on Wake Up Toastmasters. Thank you, Bill. And thank you, Phyllis. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bill.